I'm Archdeacon Rod Bauer and I welcome you to evening prayer for Saturday. The psalm will be Psalm 47 and the reading is from Ephesians chapter 4 beginning at the first verse. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He will make me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still waters. He shall refresh my soul and guide me in right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely your goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The day is now past and the night is at hand. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Father of light, receive the prayer and praise we offer you as our evening sacrifice. Make us a light for all the world, delivered by your goodness from all the works of darkness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Psalm 47. O oh, clap your hands, all you peoples, and cry aloud to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord Most High is to be feared. He is a great king over all the earth. He casts down peoples under us and the nations beneath our feet. He chose us a land for our possession. That was the pride of Jacob, whom he loved. God has gone up with the sound of rejoicing, and the Lord to the blast of the horn. O oh, sing praises, sing praises to God. O oh, sing praises, sing praises to our King. For God is the King of all the earth. O oh, praise him with a well-wrought psalm. God has become the King of the nations. He has taken his seat upon his holy throne. The princes of the peoples are gathered together with the people of the God of Abraham. For the mighty ones of the earth are become the servants of God, and he is greatly exalted. Lord Christ, eternal word and light of the Father's glory, send your light and your truth that we may both know and proclaim your word of life to the glory of God the Father. You now live and reign, God, for all eternity. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive 
he gave gifts to his people. When it said he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended in the same, is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and some teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God the mature, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro, blown about like every, to every kind of, every wind of doctrine by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For since by one man came death, by another has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we bring before you Peter, our bishop, along with Sonia and Charlie, our assistant bishops. Continue, we pray, to grant them wisdom and strength in their calling. We join our hearts prayerfully to the first peoples of this diocese, especially the Awabakal, the Biripai, the Darkenjung, the Giwagal, the Kamilaroi, Waramai and Wanarua peoples. Grant us a true sense of reconciliation. We pray for our sister diocese, the Diocese of Guadalcanal, for bishop, clergy and people together that we may join with them in witnessing to the resurrection. We pray for Scott, our Prime Minister, for Gladys, our Premier, for the National Cabinet. We give thanks for the reduction in infection numbers in Victoria and pray that they may soon be able to open up once again. We pray for Australian citizens stranded overseas, that we may soon find a viable way of bringing them home. We pray for those who have 
lost loved ones and livelihoods through the virus, virus, for those who have lost their sense of security, for those who have lost hope in the future. We pray that you may bring healing, wholeness and peace. We pray for emergency and essential services personnel, for those working on the front line in hospitals. We pray that they may be given all that is needed to protect them from the virus. We pray for scientists seeking a cure and a vaccine. Be their inspiration, we pray. And we join prayerfully with the clergy and the people of the parishes of Christchurch Cathedral and Hamilton, with Katara and Lambton, Merriweather and Cooks Hill. We pray that we may continue to be inspired to bring new ways to connect, to care pastorally and to worship together. We pray for the staff, students and the families of Newcastle Grammar School. Praying that the learning that has been hampered by the virus may continue to find connections and new ways of illuminating the minds and the lives of our students. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. O God, without you we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come visit us, Lord, this night so that by your strength we may rise at daybreak to rejoice in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen.